thank you for staying with us. The St. Lucia Development Bank teams up with the National Skills Development Center in a bid to facilitate customers of the South who wish to commence classes at the NSDC. The partnership is being forced to tackle the surge of customers from across the island wishing to gain the necessary skills to fit in the island's workforce. A special effort is being made to aid persons of the south of the island who are vying to gain the skills and education needed to be part of the island's workforce. This effort was done through an official signing ceremony between the St. Lucia Development Bank and the National Skills Development Center this week. Managing Director of the SLDB, Vincent Boland, said the initiative will bring a level of inclusivity to the people of the South. What this means, he said, is that there will now be a post held by the SLDB in the south of the island to facilitate its southern customers. Boland said this, in turn, creates a perfect marriage of the two organizations. We saw it necessary because of the surge in customers that we're now seeing throughout the island. Um, and in order to facilitate and to serve them better, we're actually coming to them. One, to save them the, the time it takes to travel to Castries and to the cost of their travels to Castries. First of all, it's, it's going to be a great collaboration because as you know, the National Skills Development Center, they, what they offer, all, it doves, dovetails into what we offer meaning that we provide educational and professional development facilities and they are the ones doing carrying out the training. So one, we're going to see an enhanced um, level of undertaking for those customers. We're going to see persons being able to access the training and access the financing to do so. In addition, our office will be able to take interviews and allow persons to um, be facilitated faster with more efficiency. Boland went on to encourage persons from the South to take advantage of the opportunity. We think now is an opportune time with the developments that we see about to take place in the South. Um, uh, there's a number of housing developments that are about to take place and we feel it's at this point in time that persons should be able to look for their rainwater harvesting, uh, put it into their foundations. We're thinking that persons should also look to see if they could minimize their electric electricity consumption and therefore utilize our services very early. So it's a, it's a great time now for us to be there and for persons to access us. On Thursdays, you'll find our desk open uh, for all of the persons in the South to access. Meanwhile, a grateful Selma St. Pri, who is the general manager of the NSDC, said she is happy that the bank sought them out. I believe the long-term benefits, they will be opening their businesses. And like some of our trainees already are doing, they employ other trainees like themselves. So what will happen, it would be a domino effect. So one gets a job, they employ others, others get other jobs and all of that. And you know, it will eliminate some of our crime and some of those on the block, because these are a lot of the trainees that we train and that we help to enhance themselves for the nation. St. Pri said the NSDC is always ready to collaborate with any entity willing to assist in training the young people of the nation. Marlon Clovis, Hot 7 News. On the first day of Japan's return to commercial whaling, two whales were killed and brought back to port. The two minke whales that were harpooned are the first to be killed by Japan for commercial purposes in more than 30 years. Commercial whaling was banned in 1986, International Whaling Commission moratorium. However, Japan withdrew from the International Whaling Commission in December and resumed commercial hunting in its territorial waters and economic zone despite international outcry. A fleet of five whaling boats departed the northern port of Kishiro on Monday. A separate deep water fleet was scheduled to leave the southern port the same day. The Japanese Fisheries Agency published quarters on Monday for the next six months of commercial whaling. Officials insist that they will engage in sustainable practices. For July 1st to December 31st, the permitted catch is 227 whales. Before Japan's withdrawal from the International Whaling Commission, it caught 596 whales with a scientific research special permit in 2017 to 2018 whaling season, according to the Commission. In other news, the season for Pekong is far from over. An exciting Calypso competition is only days away. Kaiso headquarters will soon host its own Calypso competition on Friday, July 5th at 8 p.m. Twelve contestants will vie for the crown in what promises to be an entertaining and unforgettable evening. Kaiso headquarters also is a reservoir that feeds the national tents. And I can give you some examples. 
we have this is brown sugar, who used to sing with the ambassador's Skype tent. We have Sac Papier, who also used to sing with the ambassador's Skype tent. We have our very own Kakal from the South Calypso tent, who has moved on to the, to the bigger stage also and has won the, the national Soka Monarch competition on two occasions. And I'm sure you remember his popular numbers taking too long to come and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Kaiso headquarters have grown by leaps and bounds. And now we have even outgrown our, our home down at, at, in the yard at Kaiso, at, at headquarters. And now we have moved on to the National Control Center on the same stage where the big boys play. The Assistant Police Commissioner made the announcement during a press conference held at the Blue Coral Mall. During the conference, representatives of Digicel, Lucelec, and the Royal Tanusha Police Force Allied Service Credit Union made presentations to the organizers. Other sponsors include St. Lucia Distillers, Blue Waters, Calabash TV, NBC, Police Sports Club, Vibe Radio, Operative Car Rental and Windward and Leeward Bury, among others. Before the press conference ended, the competing Calypsonians were met with a surprise. Normally we have a dipping to see who goes first and who goes last, but we, we, we did it differently this year. So I will ask, ask all the Calypsonians to just push your hands under your seat. <laughs> And I'm going to call you. Don't open them as yet. Current monarch Denny Marshall from the Royal Sinusha Police Force Band, also known as Snow, will be defending his crown this year. I am Tresha Lionel for Hot 7 News. And now for the sports news with Tennyson Glasgow.